Welcome, everybody. Thanks for being here. June 3rd, three days in. Great month ahead. Lofty goals. Sticking with what I said. New video every single day in June. Um, yeah, like I said, I have no lack of material. And I'm just picking whatever comes to me. So there's not going to be a specific theme. Um, but yeah, I think you'll enjoy this one. It's going to connect a lot. And it's uh, outside the U.S. territory. So I'm going to venture around and uh, see some correlations with a lot of what we've been talking about here in America, early America. Giants. Um, you know, vapor canopy as cold realms. Yeah. Um, episode two of my membership series comes out tomorrow, a continuation of Atlantis this month, every, every month there'll be a new theme this month. It's Atlantis. Uh, next month will be Lemuria. Um, so yeah, those that are members or interested in members can check that out. Um, let's, let's get right into this one. Um. Yeah, appreciate you all for being here. And as you can see, primitive giants versus monsters. Kind of a theme that we've been following all the way through the entire Anomalous America series. And it seems that this narrative was worldwide. And uh, it's kind of what we've been hypothesizing. It's not even hypothesizing. That's what the, that's what the, the record, what we stand on. That's... Uh, Seems to support it very much so. So, yeah, let's jump into this article. Again, appreciate all of you. Blessings to everybody. Hope you're having a wonderful June. Starting the month off right. One of my favorite months. <clears throat> my birthday is just right around the corner. So, let's get into the article here. I'm going to go around the article and I'm going to read all the captions and then I'm going to jump into the, the, uh, actual story. This is a uh, new Britain daily Herald, July 6th, 1929 primitive giant versus monster Buffalo in a thrilling last stand. How workmen building a South African road accidentally unearthed the skeleton of an eight foot white man who fought gallantly for his life thousands of years ago. Now, you know, we'll get a little bit farther into the details here in the article, but as we've been showing, you know, this surface level again is not, is not as far off as we think it is. And these quote primitive giants, as we've been showing, were far from primitive. And the deeper down you go, the less primitive things seem to get, which is an interesting kind of flip on the whole narrative. But uh, giant men, giant animals, obviously the worldwide tropical climate, you know, the vapor canopy narrative, um, lots of overlaps, even here in South Africa, lining up nicely with what we've been showing in America. <clears throat> So yeah, we'll go over here and read this caption first. The tragic finish of the primitive man's last battle against the African buffalo. In the drawing above, Dan Smith, celebrated artist, has reconstructed the scene of the encounter which happened in the dawn of time near the spot where the city of Pretoria now stands. Yeah, the dawn of time, I don't think so. This, these are giants to us, but they're small and comparative to the sizes we've been finding, right? Hopping over here. Another monster, enemy of man, the mammoth. The drawing above by Paul Jammon shows that when the great beast charged, puny human beings had to flee before his attack. Now, again, this takes us back to the Carson, Nevada, Nevada Anomalous America episode where we cover the 10-foot tall giant who built a blind next to the lakeside and was killing giant elephants so there were definitely two ways to look at this story right coming over here this drawing shows the difference 
in the size of a normal man of today and the primitive giant whose bones were discovered. Lots of correlations with America. Coming here, again, I apologize. You know, it's a... Oh, I'm wondering why it's... It's not showing me zooming. Hmm, that's not very helpful, is it? Hmm. Doesn't show me zooming on this image. Hmm. Okay, well, take a quick pause. You're still there, okay. And we're gonna go I'm going to go try and find the original really quick here. My apologies. I'm going to stop share and see if that helps. Ba -ba -ba -da. Okay. That was weird. I don't know why that happened. All right. We're back to this main picture here. Um, here's the image of the drawing made based on the size of the skeleton here to the right. It's not zooming again. That is so annoying. Why? Oh my goodness. I'm not sure why it's not adjusting. StreamYard has been having a lot of issues lately. And that is really annoying. Okay. Well, we're going to stop screen and share screen again. So strange. Don't know why. Okay. We're going to jump into the text here. Evidence of a mighty battle between an extinct species of great buffalo and a prehistoric giant man, eight feet tall, were recently revealed in a most romantic manner in South Africa. Modern machinery once again gave science new facts on which to develop its theory as to man's early life and origin. Road makers while pushing civilization into the heart of the Transvaal, had progressed as far as an old quarry near Pretoria. An old quarry. We keep hearing about this, right? You know, caves and tunnel systems, giant bones and ancient caves and ancient mines. When suddenly the workers were faced with a startling picture preserved from a remote age. Engineers were preparing to dynamite a section of stone when they were halted Sorry. When they were halted by a shout from the man who was planting the fuse, they hurried to investigate the cause of his excitement, and to their amazement, saw before them the bones of a buffalo and the gigantic man. The skeletons were lying close together in the same stratum, which geologists later asserted dates back to the primordial age of the Dark Continent. I don't know. That's obviously a big stretch. And uh, if you're new to my material, I would strongly suggest going back through my Anomalous America episode. And we show that this eight foot tall man is small in this time frame. And and uh, they weren't running for their lives. They were hunting these creatures. Um, and this creature was small in comparison to some of the reptiles that were covering the lands. And the mammoths were bigger than any elephant you can imagine. Some of these mammoths were absolutely ginormous. You know, 20 foot long tusks or bigger, you know, heads that were, I mean, these mammoths were absolutely huge. Twice, three times the size of the African elephant. The excitement of the road builders, however, was slight compared to that of S. Werstra, director of the Transvaal Museum, when he examined the bones, which were sent to him immediately. He declared that the discovery of the two skeletons, all naturally fossilized, represented the most important discovery yet made in South Africa regarding primitive man. 
From the arrangement of the skull bones, anthropologists reached the interesting conclusion that the prehistoric African man was of the white race. This finding is considered of great importance in view of many theories that have pointed to the presence of a lost race of giant white men living in Africa before the continent was dominated by the Negro race. This goes back to the Atlantis model, you guys. This is kind of breaking the narrative, again, similar to what we were saying. And I guarantee if we had enough access to fossil records and, and media reports and newspapers from South Africa, which is really tricky, there would be a lot more of this and you'd find all phenotypes. Because just like in America, we find all phenotypes, all of them, all of them listening, living together in giant communities, millions of people. Although the exact details surrounding the terrific struggle can never be known, experts have been able to depict from the evidence available a thrilling picture of how the prehistoric man probably made his last stand against the buffalo. He was equipped with muscles of iron and biceps twice the size of a modern strong man's, but he had to defend himself against an animal 10 or 20 times his size and strength. Now remember, going back to the similar slightly similar height of the white giant of new mexico the foundation of the tesian race as they called it the survivors of atlantis um they called him an aztec king as well which is very interesting because you do find um you know even columbus and some of the early de soto in spanish when they talk about tinotelan they say oh there were greeks they were caucasians they were Asiatics, men of the Orient. They were Malays. So all phenotypes in Tino Tilan, all phenotypes in what we call Florida of today. You know, Florida was Mexico, Texas, New Mexico, um, Louisiana. The entire Gulf area was called Florida at one point. Eden, <clears throat> the remnant of Atlantis post the deluge or some kind of event. Anyways, back to the article. Not only did the men of prehistoric times have to protect themselves constantly against huge animals, but in order to live, they had to secure food at the risk of terrifying dangers. To prehistoric man, starvation was a frightful, ever-present ogre against which he could prepare defense only a few days in advance. Now, this may be true in some instances, but we've also shown in South Africa, let me tell you what, they have some incredibly diverse and ancient canal systems. I would say that South Africa, is, as well as many parts of Southern Africa as a whole, had some of the most well-developed agricultural systems in the world. There are canal systems in Southern Africa that, that cover hundreds and hundreds and thousands of square miles and could feed billions of people. And they, they show mathematical precision over hundreds of miles. Um, so again, you know, take this with the grain of salt, what this person's saying. You know, he's going off of a narrative that unfortunately is um, based a lot off fallacy. Nature provided him with brawn and a sensitive ear attuned to catch the slightest sound in the jungle home. But his weapons were meager. Now remember, if you haven't seen Anomalous America, New Mexico episode, or you can just watch the clip. I clipped it. It's called the... Um, the Aztec king, I believe, the founder of the Aztecs, the uh, giant red-headed man in New Mexico. They had very advanced weapons, very, very advanced. Mir shield mirrors, me shields that were so reflective they could blind the animal, very advanced weapons. And he was fighting saber-toothed tigers and giant elephants, all kinds of stuff. So I don't think it was as destitute as, as they want us to believe. This could have been after some event, and these are just remnants of a lost race. That's definitely a possibility as well. Nature provided him with brawn in the sense that I already read that. He may have present he may have possessed a rude stone hatchet or a spear pointed with rough iron. Such spears have been discovered with the bones of other prehistoric men. Yeah. The the weaponry was far more advanced than we we're being told. And the fossil record definitely supports that. But Perhaps he was provided only with a heavy stick broken from a tree. That's 
ridiculous. There was a time when men called stick throwers employed this device to protect themselves against ferocious animals. Now these stick throwers, the 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 spear and stick were very advanced. They weren't just sticks broken off of a tree. In this case, the giant man, driven by hunger, may have set out on his quest for food. He no doubt intended to attack an animal that he might be reasonably sure of overcoming. He knew the water hole. See, this is incredible here because this correlates very nicely with the Carson footprints in the Nevada story. He no doubt intended to attack an animal that he might be reasonably sure of overcoming. He knew the water hole, which is now in the quarry near Pretoria, and, thinking that he might surprise an animal while drinking, had come armed to make his attack. But when he was confronted by the monster buffalo instead of a smaller animal, he was forced to defy death in order to obtain food. Against this huge buffalo, whose horns measured 20 feet from tip to tip. 20 feet. This buffalo was humongous. Holy smokes, guys. Just think about that. My grandfather had a buffalo uh, skull, and I always thought it was so interesting. And uh, it was probably two and a half feet, maybe three feet horn tip to tip. Maybe three feet, so 20 feet. And that was off a large male buffalo, probably weighed 1,000 pounds, maybe more. Just can't even imagine how big this buffalo was. The giant man was but a pygmy. But, disregarding the uneven odds, he fearlessly opened war upon the beast. He leaped to the side of the pool and hurled his weapon into the buffalo's most vital spot. Then came the horrible moment when the beast charged his enemy, bearing down upon him in ferocious rage. One can imagine the man caught between the horns and flung to the ground, but he was quick as a cat and powerful. He escaped for a moment to plunge his spear deeper into the buffalo's flesh. Taking advantage of the instant when the beast roared with pain, he fled toward the forest. Okay, where we jump to from here? To the forest. Okay. But his retreat was cut off. Other animals were gathering to devour the prey. The infuriated buffalo overtook the man in one great stride as he sought a path to freedom and trampled him to death beneath his huge hoofs. The effect of the spear must have proved fatal to the buffalo as the man was dying and the animal sank exhausted, dying beside his foe. By reason of the position and condition of the bones, which had lain together through the ages, scientists were able to piece together this thrilling story. Throughout the world, anthropologists are eagerly reconstructing every remnant of ancient life within their grasp, ceaselessly endeavoring to solve the mystery of the dim past. Whether or not the so-called missing link is ever discovered, that will give proof to the theory regarding the common ancestry of man and the anthropoid ape. Science has already proved to this satisfaction that a race of men of far greater stature than any known to exist today lived and fought with prehistoric animals of overwhelming size. Absolutely. And Anomalous America, California. Um, Unbelievable skeletons. Men 20 feet tall or more. Horses 50 feet tall or more. So we're going way back and they're getting way bigger. Or we had really big giants living us alongside these little pygmies. You know, because the, the, the king of the um, Tijan race in New Mexico, he was almost eight feet tall and he was living with pygmy people, four feet tall dark skin people so several different phenotypes living together and he was like their king they had completely different religions they were buried differently he was mummified the others were cremated and put in jars so you have a kind of asiatic oriental burial methods found alongside mummification so kind of blowing apart these whole ideas these you know that that uh 
man wasn't really necessarily warring with each other, although in some cases they definitely were, but for the most part were united against giant, giant creatures. The facts of man's primitive existence has been based for years upon the discovery of skeletons, fossils, and bones of men who lived thousands and even millions of years ago. Skeletons of the Cro-Magnon race, living 25,000 years ago, have been found in Europe. The Neanderthal man found near Gibraltar in 1838 lived at least 50,000 years ago. The Piltdown race antedates this ancient man by approximately 100,000 years, while the Heldeberg man is thought to have lived about 375,000 years ago. Again, these dates are ridiculous to me, uh, given the fossil record we keep finding. The earliest human remains found upon the Earth are those of the ape man found in Java, which according to scientists date back half a million years. Now, as we get farther along my Anomalous America episode, we're going to find ape-like men buried in mounds, Indian mounds. Hmm. Interesting. So that doesn't correlate, does it? More recent discoveries have also given support to the theory that men who roamed the world with the Mastodon and the Mammoth were of far greater physical proportions than men living today. Absolutely. Again, People still bounce around the idea of giants, but there are giants on every, in every state on all continents. Eight feet, 10 feet, 18 feet. It goes up and up and up. Skeletons of the supermen have been found in all parts of the world. Exactly like I said. Not long ago, a fossilized impression of a primitive man's crude sandal, the size of which indicated that the wearer was a giant at least eight feet tall, was found in the state of Nevada. Fantastic correlation and why we're led here by uh, my last article about the giant footprint and man waging war with animals and the Nevada Carson footprint stuff I've been talking about. Go back to my Anomalous America Nevada episode. Lots of fab fabulous overlays showing we have a similar race here in South Africa as we do in Nevada. The footprint showed a primitive shoe presumably made from some hide, stitched carefully to conform to the foot. This proved to experts that the wearer belonged to a fairly high order of intelligence. Just through analyzing the shoe, they had all these different shoe experts look at this and they said, this is incredibly advanced. And what's required to build a shoe? There were three or four different layers to the shoe, a welt, the inner sole, the outer sole, the stitching alone was incredibly advanced. The type of bone needle, if not a metallic or metal needle, required for this stitching also was incredibly advanced. So it just goes to show you there are several layers of technology, not necessarily technology that we think about today, that go into just building a shoe. They require very large leaps in our understanding of the prehistoric age. This proved to experts that the wearer, well, yeah, an ancient Pueblo village in Aztec, New Mexico, yield the mummified body of a warrior. Here are the overlays of a warrior, a veritable giant who would tower head and shoulders above the average man of today. Similar rich treasures of the past have been found in Europe, Asia, and in America. The skeletons and bones of prehistoric animals show that the species still existing have, like man, diminished in size. Lions, wolves, and bears of prehistoric days assumed far greater proportions than their descendants. Other giant animals of the past, such as the mastodon, the dinosaur, and the mammoth, have not survived the test of time. For descendants of the ancient giant men, science has been able to reconstruct many vivid pictures of the past. The discoveries of prehistoric bones in the oil fields of La Brea Amazing. I'll do a whole La Brea video someday. Um, I didn't get to talk about it enough in my Anomalous America California episode. But again, we're to find, they found giants 10 feet tall. They found giants 8 feet tall. They found pygmies under 4 feet. Um, so again, they found giant animals of all kinds, giant reptiles, giant birds, you name it. La Brea is an incredibly amazing thing. Definitely worthy of a little one or two part series for sure. So look forward to that in the future. But yeah, there's lots of good uh, information out there. But finding some of the earliest newspaper reports really are very telling. They At the time, they said that these are the oldest skeletons in the world, especially the pygmy. 
stimulated many such imaginary pictures. Here, the angelus man was found in a tar pool. Investigation divulged the startling fact that the angelus man was not a man at all, but a woman. It is thought that she met a violent death as the victim of one of the huge animals whose skeletons were also found in the pool. The gruesome spectacle of a battle between a mastodon and a saber-toothed tiger, considered one of the most vicious of the prehistoric carnivores, presented itself when the perfectly preserved skulls of the two animals were dug from the depths of the rich oil pit. Yeah, the oil pit is very telling. It's kind of just, again, going back to what we've been corroborating that we had. Advanced races living long alongside one another that in a cataclysm of some kind buried. And giant animals were part of this as well. And then another um, slightly smaller, still gigantic race of people with advanced technology came in, developed a civilization on top of that, and they were wiped out. And this happened three, sometimes four times. The long tusks of the tiger had completely pierced the jaw of the mastodon. The animals had thus locked in a terrific struggle that had brought death to both of them. And so just imagine what was going on. There was some cataclysm. And these animals were fighting as they died. It kind of reminds me of the mammoth frozen in time in the ice. The kind of event required to freeze animals literally while they were still chewing food is mind-blowing to me. And you have a similar story here with the tar pits. In view of the difficulty of procuring food, scientists believe many of the prehistoric men were cannibals. A man to thought have antedated the oldest inhabitant of New England by at least 10,000 years was found in 1914 at Ipswich, Connecticut. He was discovered in a kitchen midden. Now these kitchen middens are everywhere. They, they go from Oregon to Florida to Connecticut. This, this connects with the tropical age. The whole world was tropical. We have the fossil record of coral alone in northern Alaska show this clearly, and they exist all the way through. And these shell mounds are found everywhere, all along the Pacific, in my home state in Oregon, all the way over to Connecticut, all over Florida, the Gulf, on and on. Or shell mound, the structure of which indicated the number of years that had been, it had been buried. In the mound was an ancient fireplace, and beside it a number of bones broken in short pieces. These were human bones and led scientists to believe that the earliest residents of the section were man-eaters. This evidence of cannibalism simply offers additional proof of man's considerably dramatic struggle for life in those ancient days before he had conquered the material world around him. In the beginning, man had only... Now, uh, another thing to keep focus on is as we go up the Mississippi River in anomalous America, we're going to find that there were very advanced things. You know, and yeah, just kind of blowing this whole narrative apart. In the beginning, man had only his strong hands, his keen eyesight, and a sensitive hearing with which to wage his battle for existence. But he began early to demonstrate the superiority of his mind and devised means by which he could vanquish his foes. The crude spear proved his first effectual weapon. He learned to use it skillfully, but his mind carried him further. He discovered fire and found that he could make his spear stronger by heating and hardening it. New life and strength became to him from the food he learned to cook, and his mental faculties became keener. When using his spear, it was necessary to battle in close quarters. To overcome this danger, he devised the bow and arrow, which enabled him to attack his prey from ambush. The thrilling discovery of the use of iron provided the most important step forward, step toward man's present civilization. Prehistoric man used it first to mold a rough arrow and hatch it in his newly found fire. And from that time, he was able to match his skill against his enemies, no matter how large. The conflict between man and beast, ments of his ancient art, are shown further by prehistoric Fragments, frag caves, prehistoric frag, frag caves throughout the world. I don't know. Prehistoric caves, we'll say. 
The, the, the drawings were apparently scratched with bits of bone or shell, and they generally depicted animals. Sometimes they crudely portrayed duels between man and beast, corresponding to the mighty last stand of the South African giant and the monster buffalo. So yeah, you saw some of the overlays and why I wanted to get this one in here. It talked about the New Mexico uh, correlation and researchers making obvious connections that I have been making between the giants of South Africa and the giants of New Mexico. And um, it also talked about the Carson, Nevada footprints and, you know, Carson City or Carson, Nevada and Nevada in general is called possibly the Garden of Eden. They found underground cities in the, the cave systems there and believe that that was one of the exits of the Aztecs, right? They told the story of five different races who exited um, inner earth and came to the surface. And uh, the scientists were postulating that Eden, you know, could have been inside the earth and that we found our way out. That's that. Uh, there's a lot of overlays that make that seem very probable. But yeah, hope you enjoyed this article. A lot of good bridges here. Um, so many good giant animal articles that I have, reptiles, um, you know, but try to bounce around. Try not to do too many of, in this exact subject matter. But like I said, I'm doing a new video every day. So check in every day. I'm going to try to have them all up by 4 p.m. Pacific time. That's 7 p.m. But I had a lot going on today, so it's a little bit later than usual. But yeah, love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow.